Hello, welcome back to Stories Podcast. Today, we're reading The Tooth Fairy and the Dragon. It stars Dentina from our story, The Secret Origins of the Tooth Fairy. If you haven't heard that one yet, you can go back and listen now. And even better, if you want to help us keep making this show and get something great at the same time, you could go to Amazon.com and buy our new illustrated ebook version of The Secret Origins of the Tooth Fairy. It's the same story you love, with brand new illustrations by renowned illustrator Random Cushing. Perfect to read on your tablet or e-reader. Please help us out and go buy it now. And while you do that, I'll be reading The Tooth Fairy and the Dragon. Enjoy! Once upon a time, a young prince rode his mighty white steed up to the gates of an old castle. It had once been the home of some mighty king, but now it was in ruins. The old stones of its smashed towers littered the ground, and the great wooden doors were burned down to ash. In fact, pretty much everything in the area had been burned down to ash, and all the standing stones had been chewed on repeatedly by something very, very big. All in all, it was a sure sign to the prince that he had finally found it, the dragon's lair. He slid off his horse and drew his sword, looking like quite the heroic figure in his gleaming armor and great dog-shaped helmet. Dragon! he called into the darkness of the castle's great hall. I know you're here. I've come to slay you. Now come forth and let's be quick about this. I have a princess to save at noon, and I shouldn't be late. He listened to his own voice echo away into the darkness. Dragon! he called again wrapping his blade against an old bit of half-melted chain. Come and meet my sword! I have maidens to save, and I won't let you get me off schedule! From the depths of the hall, there came the scaly, slithery hiss of the dragon, gliding across the stone floor. He appeared from the darkness, roughly the size of a school bus, his scales the deep purple of a fresh bruise. Here I am, the dread dragon Drogogard, growled the dragon wisps of hot smoke billowing from his nostrils. Now what is it you are saying? The prince looked up at the great beast and cleared his throat awkwardly. Um, well, it is just, um, I am a prince and I have, you know, princesses and such. Princesses, hmm? said the dragon, smiling and revealing gleaming rows of sword-sharp teeth. And you say you're a princess? You look more like a chicken to me. A chicken? Squeaked the prince, whose nerve had quite left him at the sight of the dragon's massive fangs. Yes, a chicken, snarled the dragon. All you need is a little roasting, he roared, and he let go a massive wave of flames. The prince turned and ran, feeling the fire roasting his butt through his armor. He hopped on his horse and galloped away, yelling wildly as he went. The dread dragon Drogogard let him go, sighing deeply and settling back into his fitful sleep. Almost done with your cleaning. Just open wide, said Dentina, also known as the Tooth Fairy. Her patient today was Fred the Unicorn. He was stubborn and silly creature, probably because most unicorns have majestic and royal names, like Lady Almathea or Baron von Thunderstrike. And Fred was named, well, Fred. Okay, you're all done. Dentina said, removing her tools from the unicorn's mouth. No cavities. Very well done, Fred. Thanks, Dentina, said the unicorn. Say, do you want to know what Fred heard? What did you hear, Fred? Fred heard that the old dragon Drogogard has turned evil. He smashed apart the old king's castle and roasted the pants off some poor prince. Dentina stopped cleaning her tools and turned to Fred with a worried expression on her smooth fairy face. Are you sure about that? Drogogard was always nice as far as dragons go. He certainly wasn't the type to go around smashing castles and burning princes. Yup, yup, said Fred. Fred heard it from the old bridge troll, and they never lie. Drogogard smashed the castle and chewed it all up, but he's been awfully mean ever since. Chewed it all up? asked Dentina. Yup, yup. Fred heard the whole castle, that what wasn't already smashed and all, was all chewed up by great big dragon teeth. Well, that explains it then, exclaimed Dentina. 
and she started throwing all her tools into the pink dentist bag. Fred, you can see yourself out and help yourself to a free toothbrush. I need to go see Drogo Guard before he gets hurt. Okay, well, thanks for... Wait a minute, said Fred. You're going to see Drogo Guard. Fred just told you he burned up a prince. You'll be roasting like a marshmallow. Don't worry about me, Fred, said the Tooth Fairy, hefting her bag and flying out the window. I'm a dentist. Dentina flew furiously, beating the air as fast as she could with her delicate wings. She left her office in the clouds above Chicago, far behind, and soared into the fairy realms, banking high over the rainbow valleys of the unicorns and feeling the mist on her skin from the surging waterfalls of the mermaids. She passed the haunted forests of the elves and the deep mines of the dwarves, and just when she thought she couldn't fly another mile without dropping her heavy dentist bag, she came upon the ruined castle that the dragon had made his lair. She landed heavily in the courtyard and immediately began to investigate the bite marks on the stone walls. She compared the teeth patterns to some charts in her bag and gave her head a little shake. Just as I suspected, she said, and strode bravely into the ruined castle. As soon as she entered the darkness of the great hall, she felt the air around her grow uncomfortably hot and thick, like a stagnant swamp. Halt! boomed a voice from the darkness. Who dares enter the castle of the dread dragon Drogogard? It's me, said Dentina, walking into the room past piles of melted metal and ashy armor. Me who? asked the dragon. Dentina, the tooth fairy. Hmm, fairy. I've never tasted fairy. Do you think you would be better rare or extra crispy? The dragon asked, snorting a little jet of flame from its nostrils. Don't be silly, Dentina said briskly. I've heard you've been quite mean lately, and I think I know why. Oh, said the dragon, you presume to know about me? He gave a little snort, smoke licking from his nostrils. Tell me then, why have I become so mean? Dentina, unfazed by the smoke and fire and school bus sized dragon in front of her, just kneeled on the floor and began to unpack her dentistry bag. Well, when I heard you burned a prince and didn't eat him, I suspected something may be wrong with your teeth. After all, a freshly cooked prince is a dragon's favorite food. Everyone knows that. True, true. But perhaps I wasn't hungry. I considered that, said Dentina. But then I heard you were chewing the stone walls, which is a very undragon-like thing to do, and I realized you must be having terrible tooth pain. Sure enough, when I examined the stones myself on the way inside, I noticed that you have an irregular bite pattern that would cause terrible tooth pain. Hmm, said the dragon. Well, I have been having terrible toothaches. I just assumed it was from eating all those knights with their armor still on. Very well, Dentina the dentist and fairy of teeth. Can you fix me? Of course, said Dentina. You're in luck. I'm the only dragon-certified dentist in the whole realm. Now open wide and say ah. The dread dragon Drogogard, scourge of the skies and burner of butts, opened wide and roared, Ah! Dentina leaned into the mouth and tutted to herself. With her dentist gloves on, she reached in between all those jagged teeth and pulled out a sword, a shield, a helmet, and a half dozen wooden lances for jousting. Do you even brush your teeth? Do you even floss? Well, sometimes, said Drogogard, embarrassed. Tell me the truth, or I can't help you. I brush all the time. Dragon? Fine. I've never brushed, ever. Well, that just won't do, Dentina said, unrolling her dentist tools on the floor of the old castle. You've gotten all this metal in your teeth, and it's just ruined your bite. Don't worry, though. I'll get it sorted out. Just open wide and be patient. The dragon, after a bit of griping and grumbling, turned out to be a model patient. He did everything Dentina asked, and his mouth was so big that Dentina could crawl right in and get to work. In the end, she removed another full suit of armor, two more swords, an old leather boot, and half a dozen books on dragon slaying. To fix the dragon's bite, she also put on a set of bright silver braces. Now you just wear these for a few months or so, and you'll be back to normal, said Dentina, packing up her kit. And no more eating nights! What if I had just one? 
as like, you know, a snack? Dentina just gave him a look. Fine, fine. No more nights. That's a good dragon, said the fairy, and she lifted her bag and spread her wings. Thanks again, Dentina, Drogo Guard said as Dentina took to the skies. Another happy patient. Another day in the life of the Tooth Fairy. The end. Thanks for listening.